In this video, we shall assess the recovery, risks and complications of the Whipple procedure. This operation is commonly performed for cancer of the head of the pancreas. It is a highly complex operation. In this picture, we can see the simplified anatomy, the liver with a bile tube coming out of it, pancreas, a tumor has been drawn at the bottom end of the bile tube, the gullet, the stomach and the small bowel. Let us now understand the basics of the Whipple procedure and how complications may arise. The dotted line represents the tissue that is removed during the Whipple procedure. This includes the gallbladder, the bile tube, the small bowel and the head of the pancreas including the tumor. Let's now review this anatomy and what this looks like once this tissue has been removed. We are left with cut end of the bile tube, cut end of the stomach and of the pancreas. The biggest risk intraoperatively is blood loss. This depends upon the complexity of the operation, the condition of the patient and the experience of the surgical team. Other risks include those related to the anesthetic and previous cardiac and chest history. This picture represents the new anatomy where a loop of small bowel is brought forward and joined to the pancreas. The same loop is then joined to the bile tube and then it further down it is joined to the stomach to restore continuity. In recent times, the safety of the operation has improved tremendously, especially in experienced units. So the mortality still is just under 5% for most operations and the patients face a complication rate of between 40 and 50%. The great majority of the patients will get through these complications and sometimes it may mean a longer hospital stay. Infection may arise and commonly in the early part of recovery it is the chest but infections may occur within the abdomen or the wound as well. Leak from the joint is a constant concern and you can see over here there's a joint that is quite tenuous between the bowel and the pancreas, another one, another one between the bowel tube and the bowel as well as between the stomach. This joint between the small bowel and the pancreas may leak in one to two patients out of ten. The fluid tends to form a puddle and may become infected and may become the source of bleeding that I'll discuss a little bit later. Other than intraoperative bleeding, postoperative bleeding is rare but can occur and is one of the causes for return to theatre or return to operating room. The source of the bleeding may be from within the stomach at the ends of where the joint has been made or more dangerously if there is a leak from the pancreas that juice can erode blood vessels and cause significant bleeding. Uh, requiring immediate treatment. The risk of bleeding luckily is less than 5%. Delayed gastric emptying. This means that the patients may find that the stomachs are not working as well as expected after the operation. Patients feel full after a meal and tend to vomit a lot. If this persists beyond the first few weeks then there is a condition called delayed gastric emptying. It resolves invariably but may require nutrition supplied through a different route rather than the patient being able to eat. Surgeons are wary of this condition because it may mean an intra-abdominal infection or a leak that has not been detected. The risk of clots forming in the legs and traveling to the lungs and causing complications is ever present. This is countered by giving medication to thin the blood slightly as well as early mobility and asking patients to exercise their calf muscles. Most progressive surgical units now offer patients a pathway called enhanced recovery. This prevents complications and fosters early return to activity. The main components include pain relief, chest physiotherapy and deep breathing to avoid infection in the chest, encouraging early mobility, sitting out and walking, preventing nausea and vomiting by combining activity with medication, encouraging gut motility, early nutrition, the most important component is early detection of complications and then taking action at the appropriate time. Finally, let us now review the late complications associated with the Whipple procedure. Most all patients will have pancreatic enzyme insufficiency and will require lifelong pancreatic enzyme supplements. In five patients are prone to diabetes in the follow-up. This is something that should be checked at, on a regular basis. Patients initially may suffer some nutritional issues such as satiety weight loss, have a prolonged recovery. Clearly, some patients may suffer from a condition called dumping syndrome. The set of symptoms that includes abdominal pain, cramping and diarrhea within half an hour of meals. The great majority, it will settle quickly. It may require some small lifestyle changes such as taking small frequent meals and avoiding sugary foods. During the recovery, if the operation has been performed through the open route and incisional hernia, 
arise but is not common. Rarely still, some patients are prone to infection within the bile tubes after the Whipple operation. Patients ought to report back to the surgical team if this becomes a persistent issue. Finally and importantly, for the majority of the patients, the quality of their life will return to almost normal within three months of this operation. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any comments, please do share.